Okay, so this video is the first um, on our new functions and relations topic, which corresponds to chapter five in your textbook. Um, this is a really important chapter in terms of getting a number of really fundamental things right, um, particularly around notation, um, and also just really understanding what we're doing when it comes to functions and relations um, really underpins um, everything we've looked at so far and everything that will come after this. So whilst it's sort of a little dry in terms of content and a lot about definitions and notation, it's really important to focus on getting this right um, so that everything that comes after here um, will also be right. Okay, so the first thing we want to talk about um, in this first video is looking at set notation and the way that we describe sets of numbers. And that's important um, when we get into our next um, video in which we look at describing a function or defining a function's domain and range, um, which are sets of numbers. So we need to get a whole lot of notation right here today. So um, the first thing is to define what a set is. So a set is just a collection of objects and those objects might be numbers, letters, shapes, etc. Now we're obviously mostly going to be dealing with sets of numbers. So where we're interested in a list of numbers, okay, or a span of numbers. Um, so when we define a set or when we, when we describe a set, we need to use these curly brackets, okay. So this is the set A and the set comprises the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, okay. If we just write A equals 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5, there's no suggestion that A is a set. We're just saying that A could equal 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 or 5, where what we actually mean is A is a collection of things that includes all of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So it's a really different thing and it's really important that the notation reflects that. Similarly, I've got another set B, which is the set of numbers um, 2, 4, 6 and 8. We'll talk more about different ways to describe sets further on, but we could also say, for example, have a set C, which is the set of X values where X is bigger than 0. So that would be the set of all numbers that are bigger than 0. Okay, but you need to, um, so when we write something like this in front of the semicolon, that's where we're describing what sort of things are in the set. Okay, so in this case, the sorts of things in this set are X values, and we're interested in the X values where X is bigger than zero. Okay, another sort of set that we'll look at might be something like the set of coordinates where Y is equal to 2X plus 1. So all of the set of coordinates that fall on the line y equals 2x plus 1, okay? So curly brackets key for defining a set. Then we can talk about the elements in a set, okay? So elements are essentially the things in the set. Um, and notation-wise, we're looking at these two symbols here, okay? So a sort of rounded E or a rounded E with a line through it. Okay, and this is the difference between something is an element of a set versus something is not an element of a set. Okay, so in the first line here where we're saying 3 is an element of the set A. Okay, in the second line we're saying 3 is not an element of the set B. Okay, and we're referring to the sets A and B that we've defined up here in the first um, box, which is true. In 3 is an element of the set A which has 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 in it, but 3 is not an element of the set B, which has 2, 4, 6, and 8 in it. Okay, then we talk about subsets. So C is a subset of A if all of the elements in C are also in A. So for example, again, thinking about the fact that A is this set up here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, okay, um, then if C is the set containing the numbers 2 and 3, we would say that C is a subset of A because all of C fits within A, okay? So C is a subset of A and here's our notation for the subset. It's sort of an elongated C or a sideways U is probably a better way to think of it, okay? So C is a subset of A. Um, whereas if C was the set 2, 8, the set containing the numbers 2 and 8, okay, well 2 is in A but 8's not in A. So all of C is not in A, and so therefore C is not a subset of A. 
um, let me just change the notation slightly so we call that C in the diagram. So basically what we're looking at, if you were to think about representing the numbers in the sets using a Venn diagram, you would be looking for the fact, you would looking, you would be looking for whether or not the whole of circle C fits within circle A. Okay, in that case you would say, so this diagram is depicting where C is a subset of A. Okay, then we have the intersection and the union, which you should be familiar with from um, probability studies prior to this year. So the intersection of two sets, A and B, contains all of the elements in both A and B. Okay, so quite, on, quite often we associate the intersection with the word and, okay? So if something's in the intersection of A and B, of A and B, it's because it is both in A and also in B. So again, if we were looking at a Venn diagram, we'd be looking at the section in the middle. Okay. So the overlap between the two circles. So thinking about our sets here, we've got our sets A and B. So what we're saying here is the intersection of A and B contains is another set, and it's a set that contains the numbers two and four. Okay. So two and four are in both A and B. A also has 1, 1, 3 and 5 in it, and B also has 6 and 8 in it, but 2 and 4 form the intersection or the overlap. And the intersection is also a set. So A, set A intersection set B is the set of numbers 2 and 4, so we've used the curly brackets to indicate that. Okay. So again, you wouldn't say A intersection B, and this is our symbol for intersection, the sort of upside down U. Um, you wouldn't say A intersection B equals 2 comma 4. Okay, that's not a set, so it's really important that you're using the right notation. The union of the sets A and B, okay, so again, our, um, I'm just going to put the numbers from A and B in the diagram, I'm just copying it from the diagram above. Okay, so um, the union of A and B is all of the elements that are in A or in B or in both A and B. Now, when we use the word or in maths, we use it as an inclusive or. Okay, so actually it means and or. So strictly speaking, we really don't need this last part. Okay, that's an extraneous, an extra sentence that we don't need. When we say in maths, all of the elements in A or in B, implicit in that is that we're including, implicit in that is that we mean and or. Okay, so all of the elements in A and or in B. So they could be both in A and B, so they could be in the intersection. They could also just be in A or they could just be in B. So essentially, if you're looking, thinking about the Venn diagram, it's anything that falls within the circles. So that is all of the numbers. One, all of the numbers that are in A or in B or in both. Okay, so two and four are in both, that's fine. Um, one and three and five are in A but not in B, that's fine, they're still in the union. And six and eight, they're in B but not in A, but that's fine, they're still in the union. And the symbol for union is the up the right way U. Okay, so U for union makes sense. Intersection is the um, uh, reflection of that, upside down version of that. Okay, then we can talk about disjoint sets. Two sets are disjoint if they have no elements in common. So for example, if we had D, which is the set six, seven, containing the numbers six, seven, and eight, remembering that set A is the numbers contains the numbers one, two, three, four, and five, then there are no um, elements in common. Okay, so again, sorry, let me make this, sorry, let me make that D in the diagram. So we've got the numbers six and seven and eight in here, and we've got one and two and three and four and five over here. There's nothing in common, so there is no overlap. So we don't have special notation to describe disjoint sets, except this is essentially what we're understanding, that the intersection of A and D is an empty set. Okay, so let's be clear about the fact that the empty set is different from being zero, okay? Because if, if well, A it's a set and zero is a number, so they can't be equal to each other, they're different things. But even if we wrote a set with zero in it, that's not an empty set. It's a set that's got the number zero in it. So real, literally what we're talking about is a set that contains nothing. There is nothing in there, okay? So intersection of A and D is an empty set. There is nothing in the intersection of A and D. All right, and then the last notation we want to um, look at is the set difference. Actually, I might add one onto here as well. Um, the set difference, um, which is essentially sort of a subtraction, except mm, subtraction and sets is not technically um, the correct word, but 
we're looking at, if we write A backslash B, we're looking at the set of elements that are in A but not in B. Okay, so remembering that A was all the numbers, sorry, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. B was the numbers um, 2, 4, 6, and 8. So set A, um, A slash B is all the elements that are in A but not in B. Okay, so because 2 is in um, B, it gets removed from the, the um, set difference, A given, um, A excluding B, and so does 4. Okay, so we just get left with 1, 3, and 5, which are in A but not in B. Um, the one other thing I might just add here while we're talking is um, the complement of a set. Okay, so that is um, the elements uh, that are in, now we haven't talked about this idea, the universal set, but not in the domain. Uh, sorry, but not in the, um, uh, but not in, let's say, set A. Okay, so we need to introduce a slightly another thing here. So the universal set being all of the numbers that are possible in your problem. Okay, and we have different notations. Some textbooks use epsilon to talk about the universal set. So let's say we're talking about all of the numbers, whole numbers from 1 up to 10. Okay, let's say that's our universal set. In that case, remembering that A is the numbers from 1 to 5. So therefore, not A, the complement of A, A dash, okay, I read that as not A, is all the things that are in our universal set in the in the greater problem that we're talking about, but that are not in A. So that would be the numbers 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 in this particular case. So not A, A dash, okay, is also an important set notation. Okay, uh, let's have a look at some examples here. All right, so we've got three sets here. A is going to be the numbers, one to whole numbers from 1 to 10. B is the even numbers from 1 to 10 inclusive and C is multiples of 3 from 1 to 10 inclusive. Okay, so we can sort of think about A as being the universal set in this problem. We're only dealing with the numbers from 1 to 10. Um, B and C are both um, subsets of A therefore they both fit into A. Okay, so we want um, the first one is B. Now remember this is intersection C. So this is B and C. All of the elements that are in both B and also in C. Okay, so the things in common between B and C are just the number 6. We still would not write B intersection C equals 6. B intersection C is a set, and a set cannot equal a number. Okay, so we need B intersection C is the set containing the number 6. All right. Now, B union C is B and C. So that's anything that's in B or C or both. So we're going to list all the numbers that are in B and C. We don't need to list the repeat number twice. Okay. We also should conventionally list our sets in order from smallest to largest. So let's try and do that as we go. So we've got 2, 3, 4. There's no 5 in either of them. 6 is in both, but we only write it once. It's in the union. You don't need to repeat it. Um, 7 is not in either. 8, 9, uh, and 10 is not in either. A backslash B, so that is A excluding B. So everything that is in A, excluding the things that are in B. Okay, so B contains 2, 4, 6, and 8, and so therefore we're going to exclude 2, 4, 6, and 8 from set A. Oh, and 10, sorry, and 10. Um, so we'll just be left with 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. All right, now we get to mix those um, notations up. So A excluding the union of B and C. Okay, so remember that this is the union of B and C, and we are doing A excluding that union. So anything that's in the union is being excluded from A. So we're going to cross 2 out, we're going to cross out 3, we're going to cross out 4, we're going to cross out 6 and 8 and 9. So all we have left here uh, sorry, I left something out of the union there. My apologies. So B union C, um, we also have 10. Sorry. So um, we also cross out 10 in now that we're doing part D. My apologies for the error in part B. Hopefully you picked that up. Um, so A excluding the union of B and C. So A excluding all of the numbers in this union. 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 9 and 10. So excluding those leaves us only with 1, 
5, and 7. Again, order of operations is important here. Let's be clear about the fact that A excluding B, union C, would be a different problem. We'd be looking at A excluding B, which is those numbers, and the union between those numbers and C. Okay, so that would mean everything that's in A excluding B, so everything that's listed in part C, and everything that's listed up here in set C. Okay, so that would be 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, and 9. Okay, so a very different question. So the brackets are important, it's sort of order of operations. We're calculating the union in part D, we're calculating the union first and then excluding that from A. In um, this question that I've just added in here, we're excluding B from A and then um, calculating the union of that with C. Technically really the notation I've given you here is a bit ambiguous and we would probably put a bracket here to be clear about what we actually mean. Um, but again, just being really careful about what's happening there. Okay, so then um, the last one here is A, intersection B, intersection C, the intersection being AND. So we're looking for all of the elements that are in A and in B and in C. So any elements that are in all three sets, A, B and C, we already know that the only thing in common between B and C is the number 6 and that's also in A and so the intersection of these three sets is just the number 6. Okay, now we want to talk about sets of numbers. So sometimes there are some sets that we use really commonly and we don't want to have to use quite complicated set notation to describe those sets of numbers. So we have um, ways to describe them. Now I'm going to build this um, set up. So if you've got the list here, it's all published in front of you. But essentially, um, I'm going to build up that diagram that's the bottom here. Let me just have some space. So when you first start learning about numbers, the first numbers you learn about when you're, you know, primary school or you know even before you start primary school are positive whole numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 counting numbers okay we call those the natural numbers then as you progress you learn about 0 and you also learn about negative numbers negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4 okay and that set of numbers include zero, uh, including all the natural numbers, so positive whole numbers, zero and negative whole numbers, are called the integers, and they're denoted by the letter Z. Okay, so Z is all the positive, negative whole numbers and zero. All right, then what we do is we add in some other things. We add in numbers between the whole numbers, decimals fractions, whether they're recurring decimals or not, um, whether they're uh, negative, they might be bigger than one, eight thirds, okay, might be negative 53 fourths, okay, so numbers that are between the whole numbers, fractions and decimals, okay, now these are called rational numbers and we use the letter Q to denote the rational numbers. Okay, so Q, um, that anything that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. So 0 0.1 recurring can be written as a fraction, it's 1 ninth. 0 0.3 is 3 tenths. Okay, anything that can be written as a fraction is a rational number. And then we have numbers that are not rational. We call those irrational numbers. So we don't need a new letter. It is not Q, not rational. And we've made a few of those. Pi is an irrational number. It cannot be written as a fraction. In its decimal form, it doesn't repeat and it goes on and on forever. Root 2 is an irrational number. So all certs are irrational numbers. Okay. Um, e, when we meet E in our next topic, is an irrational number. Okay, so we've now got um, these numbers that are irrational. And then the rational and irrational numbers all together combine to give us... the real numbers. Anything that you can plot on a number line, any point that you can mark, decimal, fraction, pi, 3 pi, root 2 over pi, negative 5, any number you can mark on the number line is a real number. In maths methods, the real number set is our universal set. We don't deal with any numbers that are not real numbers. 
but yes there are numbers that are not real numbers and they are called imaginary numbers and if you were studying specialist maths um, you would learn a little bit about imaginary numbers but for us we deal with the real number set only in maths methods any number that you can plot on a number line is a real number okay so as I said those notations in for natural numbers, sometimes you'll see a textbook uses a sort of fancy font when it's talking about these number sets. Okay, but generally handwriting and, and normal typing, just a capital, um, a capital N, a capital Z. So counting numbers, natural numbers, positive whole numbers, N. Integers are positive and negative whole numbers and zero. Okay, so negative 100, negative 99, negative 98, negative 97 negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 100, 7,000, okay? They're all integers. So the natural numbers are a subset of the integers, okay? They're all integers as well. Um, sometimes, often actually we don't see natural numbers used very often. We tend to talk about positive integers rather than natural numbers, but the natural numbers are exactly that, the positive integers. Rational numbers, all numbers positive and negative that can be represented as fractions. So this includes the integers as well, okay? The number 2 can be written as 2 over 1. It's a, it is a rational number. Okay. So as you saw me build up this diagram, the rational numbers include all the natural numbers, which include, you know, include all the integers, which include all the natural numbers. They are all rational numbers. Then we have irrational numbers. Numbers that are not rational can't be written as a fraction. The decimal forms go on and on and ever and don't on and on forever and don't repeat. Um, don't have any pattern to them. Um, pi, e, root 2, etc. And all of those things together, everything combined here, so naturals and integers, um, sorry, um, yeah, naturals, integers and rational numbers and irrational numbers all combine to give you real numbers. Anything rational or irrational number. Um, anything rational or irrational. So we've got um, this diagram uh, that I've built up for you already. Okay, so we also need to be aware of a couple of special notations which save us quite a lot of time. So when we talk about R plus, have a think about what you think R plus might mean. But R plus, rem remembering that R is the real numbers, R plus is all positive real numbers. Now let's be clear about the fact that zero is not positive. Zero is not positive or negative, zero is neutral. So positive real numbers, so this for example means x bigger than zero. Any number that is bigger than zero is a positive real number. R minus is negative real numbers. So again, zero is not a negative number. So this is anything that is less than zero. So what you'd be really clear about, if you were to find the union R plus union R minus, sorry, <laughs> R minus, it doesn't equal R, okay, because you're missing zero. So it's really important that you're careful here. So this is every, this is all R except zero. Let's think about how we might actually write that. In fact, that's what the next, exactly what the next example is showing us. Okay. R excluding, so this exclusion notation, set difference, R excluding zero. Okay. So this would be all real numbers except zero. That's important when we talk about, when we're describing graphs like truncuses and hyperbolas, where the truncus exists for all x values except at x equals zero, where the asymptote is. Um, so that sort of notation becomes quite important for those kind of functions. R plus union zero. So this is positive real numbers put together with and, oh, sorry, not and, or, or zero. So positive real numbers together with zero. I'm not going to write AND because AND has um, implications of an intersection. And if we were to write intersection here, then that's actually an empty set because there is no, no elements that are both positive real numbers AND in this set. There's no overlap there. So it's really important that you're careful about that union versus intersection notation. Um, so we're talking about positive real numbers. I'm going to say together with rather than AND together with zero, okay? The union of positive real numbers and zero. Um, and then Z plus is positive integers. Uh, so let me just be clear about the fact that, sorry, the positive real numbers is essentially everything bigger than or equal to zero. So that's a 
quite handy set that we need to talk about quite a lot as well. So R plus union zero is a way to describe that. Now, sorry, Z plus is positive integers. So this is actually the same as natural numbers. But as I said, we tend to talk about Z plus or positive integers more than we tend to use in the natural numbers. All right, the next thing we want to look at is looking at sets of numbers, all the numbers between two and five, inclusive or not inclusive. How do we represent that? Okay, so we're going to introduce a new kind of notation called interval notation. So I'm going to let's I'm going to look at the set notation. I'm going to use that to draw a graphical representation so we understand what numbers we're talking about. But then I'm going to introduce this interval notation. I'll just introduce it and and I'll just um, write it and then we'll have a look at them all together once we've seen them. So the first one is a closed interval. It is the set of x values where x is bigger than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. Okay, x is between a and b and inclusive of a and b. We're seeing that with the less than or equal to symbols rather than just less than symbols. So if I were to draw, represent this set of numbers on a number line, if I have an x-axis, if I've got a here and I've got b here, we're talking about and there's also some important notation happening here. So I'm just going to do, I'm just going to write the answers in and then let's talk about it. So that would be my graphical representation. The interval notation would be this. Okay, then we'll have a look at an open interval. The set of x values such that x is a number between a and b, not inclusive of a and b. So when we draw this graphically, we're going to have our x-axis, we've got a and b, I'm going to mark them here and here. And the interval notation. All right, let's have a think about a half open interval. So x, so we've got the set of x values where a is less than x, so we're not including a, and x is less than or equal to b. Okay, so b is included but a is not included. So in terms of the graphical representation, A is not included, B is included. In terms of the interval notation, all right, and then the other half open interval, set of x values such that a is less than or equal to x, so x could equal a, a is included in the set we're talking about, but x is less than b, so it can't actually equal b, it has to be something smaller than b. Okay, let's talk about these four. And then we'll talk about the last two because there's a couple a thing we need to be a bit careful of in the last two. Okay, so hopefully it's becoming pretty clear that when we want to graphically represent a set of numbers where the endpoints are included in that set, we use a solid circle. This is really important for when we're sketching graphs. We'll talk more about this throughout this topic. Okay, if our graph stops randomly in the middle of the no of nowhere, there must either be a clear included point or a clear not included point, which is why. I'm always fussy about you not just stopping middle in the middle of your axes for no reason. Okay, Your graph should extend to the end of the axes. If it's stopping somewhere, there should either be a solid dot or an open dot there to indicate whether or not that end point is included. And that end point should be marked with coordinates if your graph just stops in the middle of nowhere. Okay, so open circle indicates that um, the graph or the, the set of values continues all the way up to that value but doesn't actually include that value. In the interval notation, we use square and round brackets to indicate that. So this is also a set. I want to be really clear about the fact that this is still, these are sets, okay? This is, x is an element of the interval set, which goes from a including a up to b including b, okay? These are not coordinates, okay? You won't, they won't be written in the same context that you would write coordinates, so it's about, you know, the context in which you'll understand whether these round brackets are talking about coordinates or an interval set. Um, there won't be confusion about that, so don't worry about that. But they're not coordinates, it's talking about a set of x values. So this is a set of values that go from a up to b, including a and including b. Okay, and the square brackets tell us that those end values are included. And we're saying here that x is an element of this set of numbers. In the same way that over here we said that we have a, had a set of x values 
where x was between a and b inclusive. Okay. In the open interval, we use round brackets to indicate that those values aren't sorry that those values aren't included in the interval. So x is an element of the interval that goes from a to b, but the round bracket around a indicates that a is not included in that interval, and the round bracket around b indicates that b is also not included in that interval. And then when we have the half open intervals, so this is the x is an element of the set of numbers that go from a up to b, but they don't include a, but it does include b. Okay? Whereas here, this is x is an element of the set of numbers that goes from a up to b, it includes a, but it doesn't include b. Okay, let's think about these infinite intervals. So let's first draw them on a number line. So if we've got the set of x values where x is bigger than a, Okay, again, let's have our number line, put the number a here. x is bigger than a, so it doesn't include a, but it includes everything above there. Okay, now if we write that as an interval, our interval has to have a start and an end point. Okay, so our interval goes from a, it doesn't include a, and it goes up to infinity. You must have a round bracket around infinity, because infinity is not a number. Okay, it's not a place we can actually count to. You can't actually get to infinity. Infinity cannot be included in a set of numbers. Infinity is an idea of very, very large. Okay, so we can't. We'll, there will always be a round bracket around infinity. Okay, not a, never a square bracket around infinity. All right. So if we put our other inter infinite intervals, so set of x values where x is less than or equal to b. Okay. So here's our x values, here's b, less than or equal to b. So it can equal b, we're going to include b, and then it's every number that is less than there. Okay, so this time, again, we need both ends of our interval. So the bottom end of this interval of numbers is from negative infinity. We're counting from negative infinity, but we can't actually get to negative infinity, so a round bracket, up to b, and we're including b in that set of numbers. Okay, so then let's think about illustrating each of the following sets on a number line. So this is the set of numbers from 3 to infinity, not including 3, and obviously not including infinity. So this would be, now I haven't actually been told that it's x, so I won't write anything on that axis. Um, we're going, usually I like to put the 0 on an axis just to give some sense of where we're at. Um, so not including 3, but everything larger than that. Okay, this is a set of numbers that go from negative 6 up to 20, not including negative 6, but including 20. Okay, so not including negative 6, hollow circle at negative 6, up to 20, including 20. So we're talking about all the numbers between negative 6 and 20, not including negative 6, but including 20. Okay, um, all the numbers from negative three, sorry, negative infinity up to negative three, including negative three, union, or all the numbers from three up to infinity. Okay, so once again, can't be the intersection here, because that would be saying anything that's in this set and also in this set, and there is nothing in common. So if it was intersection, there's, no, there's nothing in that intersection. Okay, so being really clear about the difference between those two things. So this is all the things, all the numbers that are in here, or all the numbers that are in here. Okay, something doesn't have to be in, in both that and that. All right, so we are looking at, let's have zero in the middle here. Let's have minus three and positive three. All right, so we're going from negative infinity all the way up to negative three and including negative three, or positive three, not including positive three, all the way up to positive infinity. So that's the set of numbers we're talking about there. Okay, let's talk about this one. So this is the real numbers except for all the numbers that are between negative 3 and 3. All right, so let's have 0 in the middle. Let's have minus 3 and 3. Okay, let's just think about this bit for a minute. Okay, so that is, sorry my thick pen out there. So that is all of the numbers, uh, so that is not negative 3 up to and including 3. 
Okay, so what I've just drawn in red there, that's what we are removing from the real number set. Okay, so if we're talking about all the possible numbers, this red section is what we want to subtract. Okay, so we do want to subtract. Uh, let me just change my eraser slightly. So we do want to subtract the number, th we do want to remove the number three. We also want to remove all of the numbers that are between negative three and three but we're not actually removing the number negative three. So that means in terms of what we, what we are keeping, negative three is staying in the set. It wasn't removed, whereas positive three was removed. Okay, so the blue is what we are left with. The blue is what we are describing here. That is all the real numbers except for negative three, not including negative three, up to three, including three. So you've got to think about the fact that if three is included in what you're removing, then it will not be in the set that you, you're, that it will not be in whatever's left, okay? If negative three is not in what you are removing, then negative three will still be in the set. So actually, if we have a look at C and D, they're the same. Different ways of representing the same information. Okay, so there's going to be different ways we can write our sets. All right, let's have a think about this one. This time we've got an intersection. So we need the numbers that are both in this and in this. Okay, so again, let's think about, let's think about these two separate sets. Oh, sorry. Uh, let me just change my eraser back to the nice easy stroke eraser. Okay, so let's think about, uh, let's say I'll draw this set in green and I'll draw um, this set in blue and then my final set I'll draw in red, okay? All right, so uh, let's think about numbers here. So we're going to have minus 10, minus 2, 0, 4, and then 230, way up here. Okay, so negative 10, to f including negative 10, up to 4, in not including 4. Alright, and then the blue set is negative 2, including negative 2, up to 230, and including 230. Okay, so we want the intersection of those two things. We want the overlap which is happening here, okay? So we want to think about what's in the overlap. So negative 2 is in both sets. It's included here and it's included here. So negative 2 is included in my intersection. 4 is not included in the green set, so it can't be in the intersection. But everything between 2 and 4 is included, okay? So the set that we're trying to label is this red set here, okay? This is actually the same as negative 2 to 4. All right, express each of the following sets using interval notation. All right, so here we've got an interval. Uh, the axis isn't called x or y or anything, so I won't say x is an element of. We'll just write the interval. So it goes from 2, including 2, up to 13, not including 13. Okay, this is a set of x values, so we'll say x is an element of. Um, and the set is everything bigger than or equal to negative 3. So the smallest value in that set, the smallest number is negative 3, and it's included, and we're going all the way up to infinity. All right, here we have a set of a values. So a is going to be an element of this interval. And our interval is, uh, a is bigger than negative 1 third. Can't equal negative 1 third though, so round bracket and it goes up to the square root of 5, and it can equal the square root of 5, so square bracket. D, we want to represent using interval notation, so r plus union 0. Remembering r plus is all positive real numbers, and we, and we want to put that together with 0. Okay, so we're going to have positive numbers and 0, and so we're looking at including 0 and going all the way up to infinity. All right, so this particular set here, we could write this two ways, and I strongly advise you to stick with the most straightforward way, which is to literally describe what you do have. So we're going from negative infinity up to negative 5, not including negative 5, or the numbers go from 5 up to infinity. This is the easiest way to write it. I would encourage you to write that set that way. However, my experience tells me that a number of students like to think they're clever and like to write it as a removal from the real numbers, and you need to be careful here. 
you are removing the number 5. So sorry, it's all. Um, and you are not removing, sorry, you are removing the number negative 5, but you are not removing the number positive 5. So in terms of what's being removed, you are taking that out and you are not taking that out. Okay, so therefore that is what you are removing from the real numbers. Okay, so either notation is correct, this is much easier. I guarantee you'll get the first version wrong a lot less of the time and there's nothing wrong with it, it's perfectly correct. Tell me what you do have is easier than telling me what you don't have. Okay. All right, and then F is R minus, which is the negative real numbers. So um, this is the same as going from negative infinity up to zero, but not including zero, because zero is not a negative real number. Okay, some work here to practice these new notations, exercise 5a. I can't stress how important it is to get this right. Everything we learn in the remainder of this topic, domains, ranges, etc., if you can't accurately describe them using the notation, you're going to get the answers wrong even if you understand what a domain is and what a range is. Okay, so let's really focus on getting this notation right today.